Hey what's up guys and welcome back. Today we shall review a game on misfortune by professional player Altec, the ADC for American team Echo Fox. In this game he has 71% kill participation and KDA ratio of 8.3. In this video we are going to talk about how to play misfortune with a new increasingly popular item build, discuss your build order, positioning in lane and team fights, and of course many other things. For a long time this champions had two main playstyles. The first one is maxed Q plus Dark Harvest. This choice is good for a strong mid to late game, where you'll be dealing tons of damage with your Q ability. And the second one is maxed E plus Arcane Comet. That's a great early game poke tool, which also provides lane control. But recently MF with Press the Attack and Blade of the Ruin King has been rapidly gaining popularity. This strategy allows MF to turn from a one key champion into a strong auto attacker. It amplifies her early game potential compared to the other builds, say with Lethality. You gain a lot of sustain and a slow in effect, while well, Misfortune's ultimate ability doesn't get any weaker. This build is used both in solo queue and pro games. MF is quite easy to play, so if you're just starting off, make sure to try her out. As for cons, Misfortune has no escape abilities. When matched against assassins and initiators, choosing a safe position for dealing damage may be a real problem. For the same reason, MF is vulnerable to ganks in the early game. That's why she requires a peel support or a support with disengage tools. Let's take a look at the team compositions and their early game plans. The top lane matchup is Jace vs Clad. If the former doesn't manage to get an early lane advantage, Clad will eventually become stronger than Jace and will dominate the lane. The jungle matchup is Sing Zhao vs Jax. Both the champions can make level 2 ganks. If the game goes smoothly, Jax will be much more powerful than seen late. Blue team's mid laner is Karthus. In lane, he usually plays passively and tries to farm. Of course, his strongest point is his ultimate ability. The Death Singer is matched against Lux. This mage has a long range and effective early game poke. MF's support is Fiddlesticks. In lane, they have decent poke and can harass their opponents from the very first minutes of the match. One of their biggest power spikes is at level 6. The combination of Fiddles and Misfortune's ultimates is very strong, especially when used unexpectedly for their opponents. They're matched against Sivir and Thrash. These guys have high burst damage and a good engage potential. They can disengage too, due to Thrash's lantern. Red Team's bot lane should dodge Thrash's hook at all costs, and keep in mind that the enemies have Dark Passage and Spell Shield. MF's runes are the following. The primary path is Precision with Press the Attack. As we already mentioned, this rune enhances your auto attacks. Next, Overheal. This one is a quite common choice for Marksman in the current meta. Such a simple item as Vampiric Scepter will grant you a nice shield in lane. In slot 2, take Legend Alacrity. Additional attack speed is a good bonus for any ADC. With Coup de Grasse, you're gonna deal 7% increased damage to champions below 40% maximum health. Your secondary path is Sorcery. Mana Flow Band can partially help you solve mana problems and is especially useful in lane. Next comes Absolute Focus, which improves your AD while above 70% of your maximum health. And don't forget about your bonus rune stats. Choose attack speed in row 1 and adaptive force in row 2. These runes might help you get lane priority and slightly improve your early fight potential. As for the last rune, it depends on the matchup. Misfortune is matched against Sivir and Thrash, so she takes armor. Your starting items might vary. If your enemies have lots of early game pokes, start with Doran's shield. It's a defensive option. If you want to play aggressively right away, Doran's blade will suit you better. When laning against engaged supports like Thrash, don't get too exposed to their abilities. Try to keep your distance and carefully push the lane to get priority. In lane, you should poke your opponents with Q. Cast it on enemy minions to damage an enemy champion behind them. The second shot always critically strikes if the first shot kills the target. As we mentioned, MF works great with disengaged supports. They enhance her trade potential and make her less vulnerable to such initiators as Thrash. Your ability order is on the screen. We recommend that you max Q first with this build. Misfortune is very vulnerable to ganks in the early game. Try to choose a safe position in lane and maintain vision in the river. Wards can always help you avoid an enemy gank. Now let's talk about Misfortune's early game items. The boots. In the early game you can just buy boots of speed, there is no actual need to upgrade them. However, there are two boots options for this champion. Boots of swiftness grant you maximum mobility. Berserker's Greaves is a more common choice. They increase your attack speed, which suits this build especially well. At your first bag, make sure to purchase Vampiric Scepter. Next, upgrade it to Bilgewater Cutlass. If you have an early game advantage and can afford Cutlass at first bag, you rock. Further on, Cutlass is upgraded to Blade of the Ruin King. 
This item gives you sustain and significantly amplifies your auto attack damage. In the early game, it's quite difficult to implement Misfortune's ultimate. That's exactly what makes this build so darn awesome. Notice how much damage MF deals with basic attacks. After a successful fight, try to destroy one or more turret plates, they grant additional gold. Now, if you think that this build cuts down your damage from the ultimate, think again. Just have a look at this episode. You shouldn't forget that Blade of the Ruin King is an active item. When activated, it deals magic damage to the target champion and steals 25% of their movement speed. Because of this, you can easily deal tons of damage. Misfortune is very good at contesting neutral objectives. The E ability allows her to zone and slow down enemies. Plus, fighting for objectives, Draco or Nesham is always fighting in a narrow space. It's just perfect for your ultimate ability. As for your late-game items, purchase Yomu's Ghost Blade after Blade of the Ruined King. It grants AD, cooldown reduction and lethality. Next, you need two more lethality items – Dusk Blade of Drag Thumb and Edge of Night. Long story short, MF needs them to enhance her ultimate's damage. If the enemy has several champions with lots of armor, make sure to build Last Whisper. In late-game teamfights, you deal significant damage both with your basic attacks and the ultimate ability. Try to play carefully. Don't forget that Miss Fortune has no escape and can't quickly exit a fight, like, let's say, Tristana. And that's pretty much it, pals. Here's what you should learn after watching this video. Press the attack and Blade of the Ruined King. The combination of press the attack and Blade of the Ruined King allows Miss Fortune to turn from a one-key champion into a strong basic attacker, who can deal tons of damage with auto-attacks. MF gets the necessary lane sustain and dual potential, and her ultimate doesn't get any weaker. Ganks Misfortune is really vulnerable to ganks in the early game. Try to choose a safe position in lane and maintain vision in the river. Wards can always help you avoid an enemy gank. So by the end of the game, MF has 13 kills and 12 assists, which is a very good result for a marksman. And I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Follow the simple tips and you'll surely win more often. As always on this note, thank you so much for watching this episode and good luck in your solo queue.